Two-year-old Alex Conaty is one in three million, as he is a primordial dwarf. We're talking about children who are going to be very small, much smaller than the, the, the dwarfism that people might think of. Unlike other forms of dwarfism, Alex's body will stay in proportion. He will always be a unique little man, never growing past three foot tall. But with this rare form of restricted growth comes restricted life expectancy. There's a risk of death from suffering an aneurysm. I wouldn't like to wake up one day and find that there was nothing there. And that suddenly he'd gone during the night because of an aneurysm had got him. Leave it on the hand as if you want deaths. In a race against time, to find out if their son has a potentially fatal brain aneurysm, the Conaty family embarks on an extraordinary journey to America. Here, Alex's parents will have to risk his life in a bid to save his life. Come on, you're not quick enough. <laughs> what will the future hold for the tiniest boy in Britain? Worldwide, there are less than 100 cases of microcephalic osteodysplastic primordial dwarfism type 2. But what makes children born with this condition so extraordinary is that their bodies are proportional, but tiny. Alex Conaty is thought to be the tiniest primordial dwarf in Britain. My son doesn't believe in doing things in halves. No, he's only decided that he wanted the rarest form of dwarfism. It's not normal dwarfism. It's very, very small dwarfism. Alex is less than 30 inches tall and weighs the equivalent of six bags of sugar. His friend Patrick is also two. But unlike Patrick, Alex wears clothes made for a six-month-old baby. This cap is for a nine-month-old. Alex lives in Liverpool with Dad John, Mum Sue and her two children from a previous marriage. Mike is 12 and Jess is nine and they were both of normal birth weight. But when Sue was pregnant with Alex, routine scans uncovered that he was much smaller than a normal baby. It was alive, it didn't matter if it was small at that time. No, I was only small. Didn't think nothing of it, really, Believe did it you? didn't. At 32 weeks, Alex was delivered by emergency caesarean, as doctors were worried he would not survive in the womb. The doctor who delivered him said, wow, he's small. And I still didn't think of anything, to be honest, at the time. Alex was rushed to the neonatal special care unit. When Sue and John saw him in his incubator, they were shocked. He weren't big. He weren't normal size. He was small. Damn, he was small. His entire hands smaller than my thumbnail. It's, it scared me, to be honest, when I seen him the first time. I looked at him and, with having two other children, I knew he looked different. I just thought, well, maybe it's because he's premature. But again, when you look around at the children that's mm. in the neonatal, you think he's not got the same features as them. He, he looks really different. After six months of genetic tests, the Conatis were told what was wrong with Alex. She said, oh, your son's got microphallic osteodysplastic primordial dwarfism. There you go, sweetie. The primordial part of um, the title means that um, Alex has been small from the moment he was conceived. And that is, is in contradiction to other forms of dwarfism, where the baby might be a normal size up until later on in the pregnancy, and then the growth of the limbs slows down. So Alex was small right from the word go. The microcephalic bit of the MOPD is a small head. So although Alex is small, his head is much smaller than you would expect for the size that he is. And the fact that people think that his, his eyes may look big is actually because his head is small and the dwarfism bit is just the small, small stature that he's got. Although they had a diagnosis, Alex's doctors had never encountered a child like him before. We go to our own doctors, consultants, and these people are the best they've looked after, not just Alex, ourselves. They've gave us good treatments, 
But when we've been trying to ask them for advice, most of them said, well, we can't answer. We, there's nothing we can give you. And even his main paediatrician consultant said, you're just as expert of, as us. You're the people who know more about it. You're living with them. But whilst researching Alex's condition on the internet, the Connetys were alarmed to discover that primordial dwarves with MOPD type 2 rarely make it to 30, because it can come with a potentially fatal condition. We know that some individuals who have MOPD type 2 will have an aneurysm of one of the arteries or veins in their, in their head. And the problem is that it could rupture and you could have a bleed inside the brain. In order to detect if Alex has brain aneurysms, he would need to undergo a series of brain scans. The whole point of doing the scan is that these aneurysms can be treated. However, when Alex was nine months old, a chest infection meant he needed to be put on a ventilator, but when he was sedated by general anaesthetic, he almost died. I went into the theatre with him. Um, I held his hands. He fought like mad as the doctors tried to sedate him. And he kept looking at me as if, say, Daddy, help me. He started putting the tube down without any forewarning. His heart monitor, all the alarms went off, he crashed. Alex suffered a cardiac arrest. Doctors battled to resuscitate him, but Alex was battling for his life. Twice I sat down, bent down. I whispered into his ear, go sleep soon, he fought enough. <laughs> if there had been a switch on the wall at that time, I hate myself for even thinking about it now. I would have turned it off. Now age two, doctors have decided that it's too dangerous for Alex to have a brain scan, as it would involve him having a general anaesthetic once again. But the Connetys feel it's a risk worth taking, as they are living in fear of an invisible killer. You can't see if there's an aneurysm there to start with. If you don't have the MRI scans, your son, your daughter may be there today, but may not be tomorrow. Whereas with the scans, it's given us six months hope. The DuPont Hospital for Children in Delaware, America, has agreed to perform Alex's brain scan. This hospital is seen as a center of excellence for children with MOPD type 2. Sue and John also hope to gain valuable knowledge on their son's development here. Alex is fed through a port in his stomach because he has struggled to swallow since birth due to his small jaw and esophagus. But eating is not the only developmental milestone he hasn't hit. He doesn't walk or anything as yet. I think he really wants to walk. I think he wants to run before he can walk. <laughs> he doesn't crawl around the room or anything, but he's, he's quite weak in, in his limbs and stuff like that. Alex's parents are taking him to America, where he'll attend the Little People of America convention, as well as having tests that may literally save his life. Conaty is two years old and destined to be the tiniest boy in Britain. Born with the rarest form of dwarfism, MOPD type 2, his whole family are traveling to America to meet other people with the same syndrome. But this is no holiday, as Alex is also having tests to see if he has a potentially fatal brain aneurysm. arrives in Seattle, the venue of the Little People of America convention. Approximately two and a half thousand people attend this two-week convention, with roughly half of the people present being of restricted stature. However, Alex is one of only 20 primordial dwarves at the convention. And for Dad John, it's a learning curve to meet other children and their parents with the same condition as his son. He's so cute. How old is Alex? He's two. He's two? Yeah. She's six. Hello, beautiful. How is she health-wise? She's doing really good. 
she eats well. Um, she hasn't gotten sick within about nine months. It's good. Really when we go to Delaware, Alex is going to have the MRA to see if there's anything there. We're just fingers crossed. She had an um, MRI and MRI to check for aneurysm. Everything okay? Everything went well. It's good. just a sinus infection. And as they have the rarest form of dwarfism, they attract a lot of attention from the other little people. Primordial dwarfs are little people. Even the achondroplasia dwarfs who come up to us, they explain, oh, Alex is a little person. Alex. It brings it home to you. Hi, Alex. That's Alex? Hi, Alex. Hi, Alex. Say, hello, Michelle. Yeah. Hi, Alex. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You are just absolutely yeah. I was just so interested in whether the walk and whether the talk and um, that th th them themselves have got a form of dwarfism. Hi. Hi. Can you walk? He can't. Alex is two. Trinity six. How old are you, sure? I'm 13. 13. And you're 13? Yeah. Wow. Where are you from? What part of the USA? California. Oh, the best part of the USA. Where are you from? We're from England, a place called Liverpool. But this trip is not all about Alex and the Little People of America convention. We're trying to make this not just all Alex's trip. 1053, please. Ali sometimes can be the star attention, and you wonder how they coping. Thank you guys, enjoy the game, OK? I honestly don't know what effect it's properly had on the kids. The kids absolutely love the bones of them. I've asked them, mm. so no worries. They know what Ali's been through. I don't think all kids would cope like that. I do believe that my other two kids are just as special as what Alex is, but in their own way, and that's in their loving way. Tonight, the Connetys have organised a special meal to get to know four other primordial dwarves and their families. Meeting the other children is overwhelming. Kennedy. When I first seen her, I always thought Alex was small. And it was only when I met Kennedy. Wow. One small child. She lifted the glass up, brought it to her face. The entire rim of the glass literally filled her face. Wow, blew us away. Mm. Chloe, she has hearing difficulties. But she's got this hearing aid which she's got diamonds in. And she's a proper little girl. She's so, so pretty, so pretty. But you look at Trinity, she's small. She's one of the smallest. She loves life. Just to see that was good. Christopher, who's nine years old, same age as Jess. He's a bundle of joy. He's got so much life for something so small. So much energy comes out of him. For Mike and Jess, this dinner has given them both a glimpse into their brother's future. What's really gone down great as Jessica's met Faith, Chloe's sister, who's 10 years old. That's given them time to speak to each other on their own without any parents around, whatever, talking about how the feelings have been. What's it like having Alex as a brother? Um, it, it's fun. Um, but sometimes it gets quite annoying because one of my friends keeps saying, oh, he's so cute, oh, he's so cute, and I've heard it too many times from her. A lot of times at school when they have, like, a birthday party or something like that, and my mom and my sister come, a lot of girls, just, like, when it's, like, I'm the in the front of the class and, like, everybody's singing happy birthday to me, when Chloe walks in the room, everybody gets out of their seats and runs to her. And it kind of bothers me because they, she gets a lot of attention, like, 24-7. I think it's good for them to talk about what they feel and think. Yeah, it affects definitely. them, it affects the whole family. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they do uh, capture a lot of attention. And for them to be able to share that with somebody that understands what they're feeling and yeah. thinking, I think is wonderful. You know, sometimes to help her feel special. Maybe we'll have to have Chloe watched by a, a 
family member or friend and allow me to just go and do something with faith. Whilst all the children seem to be living a normal life, the threat of a fatal aneurysm looms over them. And for one child, Christopher, a scan, like the one Alex will have in a matter of days, has revealed abnormalities which may be an aneurysm. While meeting with some of the children, Michael met up with Christopher. They'd gone on like a house on fire. I said, do you know Chris has got a suspected aneurysm? And Michael was like, no. And it really worried him because he's like, he's playing, he's doing normal things like normal kids do. He said he could have just dropped down dead in front of me, Mum. He said, you, you just don't realise that, that this is going on. He said, Alex could be running around or whatever, not knowing. So I think that's brought it up to, to Michael, realising how much these scans are needed for the children. Tomorrow, the Connetys head off to Delaware for Alex's all-important tests. So they spend their last day reflecting about their time in Seattle. For Mike and Jess to see these kids who are not two years old like Alex, but they're just doing ordinary things that ordinary kids do. I think it's just been absolutely fantastic. When we saw Chloe, it was dead funny because she just ran around everywhere and she could talk. And when Alex is older, we, w we want him to be like Chloe. We like when we first met the families, and then Mike and Jess, more so Mike, it was a shock to him. It took his breath away. He looked flabbergasted, didn't he? Mm. When you look at Ali, it doesn't seem like he's going to grow up to be that small, because you only see him as a two-year-old kid. But then you see all the other dwarfs, and they're only about the size of my knee. And it um, just came as a big shock to me. Wilmington in Delaware is the location of the DuPont Hospital for Children. It's here that Alex will undergo four days of tests, which will look at his development and examine his brain for aneurysms. Jess and Mike are being looked after by a family friend. Yes! On day one of the tests, Sue and John head to the hospital. Since meeting other primordial dwarves, they now have new concerns about their son's future. We've met up with quite a lot of the other kids now. I was quite shocked to find out that they were run walking at early ages, like 14 months and stuff like that. So that's pretty, it got me a little bit worried, thinking, wow, Alex is two and three months now. He's not making any attempts of walking. Out of all the children that were there, Alex is the only child that's tube fed. All the others, you can see them, they've been munching away on pizza, having the time of their life running around and stuff. And I think Alex is the only one who's not mobile as such. The first meeting the Connetys have is with Dr Michael Bober, a specialist in Alex's form of dwarfism. He needs to examine Alex to confirm that he has MOPD type 2. So this young man is now two years and three months, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Keep still. Well, I think after seeing him and reviewing the records that, that we've seen, I, there's no doubt that he has a form of primordial dwarfism. And without seeing the x-rays, I think it's almost certainly MOPD too. For Alex individually, it appears that, aside from his size, the biggest difference between him and other children that are his age is really his developmental level. I really am a strong personal believer in there's no such thing as too much therapy. And as long as the child is not getting frustrated or physically worn out from it, then those things should be done. With the examination over, Dr. Boba sees no physical reason why Alex is behind developmentally. There's no reason to believe that he is not going to be able to eat by mouth mm. and to feed himself. Mm. So those things need to get started mm. yesterday. Mm. He's going to have to learn how to deal with textures and learn how to deal with liquids. And the only way to do that is really with, with practice. It was nice to meet you. 
thank you so much for seeing us. Oh, you're welcome. I honestly can't believe yeah. we've got here. We thought it'd take years, years and yes. years and years, to be honest. Next, the anesthesiology team will assess whether Alex will need to be put under general anesthetic to have his brain scanned. This could be life-threatening for Alex, as they would need to intubate him by putting a tube down his throat. Yeah. Come on, open up. But his airway is so tiny that in the past he has suffered cardiac arrest from this process. So everyone is hoping that on the day, general anaesthetic will not be necessary. Are you hoping to do the actual thing just through sedation or do you think you're going to go for a fall? I would like to do minimum possible and sure. get the procedure done. Yeah. If we can get it done through sedation, that will be great. So we'll keep our fingers crossed yeah. and hopefully yes. everything is okay. <laughs> It's the end of the first gruelling day, and for Sue and John, the fear of what the brain scan may find has been replaced by the fear of whether Alex will survive going under general anaesthetic. I've been worrying about him just going under sedation. No what he's been like in the past. He had the cardiac arrest. That's a big one for me. Then the aneurysms. It's something that's been in the back of our minds, but we've never thought what happens if it does come back, that there is something there. It's just a case of just hoping there's not, but if there is, it's just something we're going to have to deal with. Yeah. Day two, and the Connaughties are back at the hospital. Today, Alex is having an X-ray to look at whether there is an anatomical reason as to why he does not walk. We're going to start with his legs, and we're going to lay him down, and this is the film, okay? Sure, yeah. Unlike other primordial dwarves, at two, Alex is still not mobile. Where's the lights? Alex, now what I need you to do is look right up here at this camera for me, wow. okay? He's had something like 34 x rays off one side and another in the past. Good job, you're all done. Well done. Have Say goodbye. Bye bye, Alex. <laughs> Alex's x rays will be examined by Dr. William McKenzie, an orthopedic pediatric specialist. Alex's leg films look good. His uh, hips are, um, are well formed, legs are well aligned, he's got good looking bones. Um, there are no major issues. One of the biggest problems we see with these kids uh, is up here in the hip, the angle between the femoral neck and the shaft can be reduced, but he does not have that deformity and his leg films look fine. Here, lie down on here. Let's wiggle your hips around again. There we go. Good work. Look what it means. With Alex's hips in full working order, Dr. McKenzie turns his attention to Alex's feet. When we see kids with these, for, these deformities, mm -hmm. um, that is obviously not the way the foot was designed to be stood on. Yes. And so when you bring the foot over to a better position, it gives them a much more stable base mm -hmm. and better feedback and it's easier walking. Oh, okay. Right, yeah. In the UK, Alex had splints specially made for him. You know, the problem with the big splints you have, they do a great job of controlling the deformity, but they're, they're big lumpy things with yeah. big pair of shoes on that is two or three sizes mm -hmm. bigger. And so we'll try and get something a little more streamlined and a little lower cut. The idea is that the, that the splints will hold the foot in a corrected position, and so hopefully he'll walk. Before they came to America, Sue and John thought that Alex couldn't walk because he was a primordial dwarf. The splints he had on, we just thought they were fine. But for him to actually pinpoint that, that they're no good for them, I'm really excited for getting these new ones on and hopefully getting them standing more and eventually walking a lot sooner. Robert Lewis specialises in making orthopaedic splints. He needs to take a cast of Alex's feet, which involves holding the foot in the correct alignment. But Alex isn't used to having his foot in this position, so it's very painful. It's a good boy. We know. Alright, come and give Daddy a love. Daddy, come. It's horrible seeing 
your child cry, whether it's in discomfort or whatever, when you know there's nothing you can do to help. But at the end of the day, it's, it's going to benefit him. It's going to help him walk. For me as a parent, I think that's the utmost paramount thing we can do, help him walk. In less than 24 hours, Alex's life will be put at risk as he goes under general anaesthetic. Alex Conaty has the rarest form of dwarfism, MOPD type 2. His family have traveled to America to seek specialist advice as to why, unlike other primordial dwarves, he's not walking. Alex will also undergo a scan to see if he has a brain aneurysm, which could kill him. Because of the risk of general anaesthetic, doctors in the UK won't perform the scan, but Dr. Boba has weighed up the pros and cons. In this case, there's the risks of anesthesia in a small child versus the benefit of being able to detect an aneurysm and be able to intervene. And these aren't recommendations that we make lightly. American medics will only use general anesthetic as a last resort. But with the scan less than 24 hours away, Sue and John are having doubts about going against UK medical advice. Part of me thinks, don't do it. If he doesn't make it through the anesthetic or the sedation, it doesn't matter whether he's got an aneurysm there or not. But if there is something there, at least they can work on it or they can give us an idea of what they can do, whereabouts it is. Sometimes you wonder if you've done the right thing for your son, for ourselves. Mm. Mm. We have. Yeah. For Sue and John, they have to face the reality that Alex's life may be cut short, not only because of the scan, but also because MOPD type 2 children like Alex rarely live past the age of 30. He means so much to us. I don't think we would have a life without Alex now. He's such a big part of ours and everybody who meets him. I think mm. if Alex wasn't around, something that's not even worth bear thinking about. And sometimes I think mainly about the sadness, the loss, if we did lose him. My son, gone. Come here. Mm -hmm. Give Mum a big hug. Give Mum a big love. Will be having his brain scan. Mike and Jess are being looked after by a family friend because Sue and John don't know if Alex will survive if he has to have a general anaesthetic. I think he's going to do okay. Go through the procedure anyway, and then we'll sit back and wait to find out what the proper news is. See what's going inside there. Thank you. As much as John's being all confident and stuff. I just can't feel like that at the moment. Just, just worried. Mm. Just want it all over and done with. Give Mummy a big love and say, cheer up, Mum. Say, I may be small, but I'm strong. I know, he's a fighter. S strong as an ox. Go on, call me here. Okay. Are we going to go through now? Take you through? No. It's the point of no return, and the moment the Conities have been dreading, as they're called through to the anaesthetic room. Mm. Ah. I know. 
the Carnatis have been given some devastating news. Alex will need to be put under general anaesthetic, and for Sue, it's something she can't bear to watch. As much as I didn't want, I don't want to be there with them. Uh, you just feel as if it, it's out, well, it is. It's out of our hands now. So, whereas when he's with us, you know, you can protect him. When he's not with you, you can't protect him as such. But he'll be fine. In the past, Alex has had a cardiac arrest whilst being put under general anaesthetic, because it's difficult to insert a tube down his very small throat to supply oxygen to his tiny lungs whilst he's unconscious. Today, however, the anaesthetic team are able to put Alex under without any complications. Now I know that he's down there, I feel a lot better. I feel absolutely exhausted. I feel as if I could sleep for a week. I still feel as if I've got loads of I still feel as if I could just sit and sob for hours and hours and hours, even though it's all going well. Mm. I just feel as if I've got it all inside and I need to let it out, but well. I know that he's all right, so I feel a lot better. Even though now he's having the MRA and we have another p problem, possibly, mm. and, uh, I'm not even worried about that at this moment in time. The major one, on. the major one was getting them sedases, mm. intubases, whatever. That was the major hurdle for me, mm. especially based on past experiences. Mm. Let's just hope the scan gives us the results we need. But it's not just Sue and John who are anxious to hear news. Alex's brother Mike and sister Jess are waiting at their hotel room. Worried, but a bit glad for Alex to have his scan to see aneurysms because I want to know if he has one. But if he has one, I'm gonna be dead sad because he'll probably die quite soon. If they can um, fix it and take it out, then if he has the scan, it'll be good. Because if they find it out later and suddenly might not be able to like take it out and he might die in his twenties or thirties. So I'm happy to have it, but I'm just scared in case he does have one. I'm hoping that he doesn't have an aneurysm because I want him to live until he's, like, 123 or something. <laughs> Alex is now under general anaesthetic and a crash team are standing by in case he goes into cardiac arrest. Enough. <laughs> Come here. He'll be okay. I know he is. I just want to see him. Yeah. Three scans will record 3D computer generated images. An MRI will look at Alex's brain as a whole, whilst an MRA records images of the blood vessels, and an MRV will record images of the veins. These scans will then be analysed by Dr. Boba. The general feeling is that aneurysms are weakening in the arterial walls. And ultimately, given enough time, that wall will fail. Depending upon the location of the blood vessel and other factors, that failure could lead to a hemorrhage and death. It may lead to just a small stroke uh, and permanent or a temporary disability. Alex is already beginning to wake up, but the anaesthetics team are anxious to get him into the recovery room as soon as possible. Good, thank you. Uh, we'll see you up shortly on the other side. Sure. is not completely out of the woods yet. He's still sedated from the anesthesia and it's not worn off completely.
As the anesthetic finally wears off, although Alex is in no pain, he is distressed. Well, at least that's all over and done with. The anaesthetic, the sedation. I can handle them being cranky like this, just knowing it's all over and done with. With the fear of the anaesthetic behind them, the Connaughties are glad to be leaving the hospital. But it could be a week before they get the results of the scans and discover if Alex's life is in danger. Day three and back at the hospital, the Connaughties are still looking for answers as to why Alex doesn't walk. Good morning. Good morning. He has had some specially made splints created for him, which are ready for him to test drive. When he used to wear his old splints, Sue would have to help him move by using her feet to make him step forward. Both Sue and John are hoping that eventually with his new splints, he'll learn to walk. Should we try them on? Yes. So it always goes by the straps on the outside. Bend the knee, and that loosens up these muscles in the calf. To make Alex's new splints cost 500 pounds. No, ma'am. Little hip shoes. You probably need something you'll want to stand against. Wow. <laughs> Where's Ali? Whoa. You're walking. Yeah. You've never had a ton of boy. Whoops. Hey. Hooray. Look at you. You're dancing. Never mind walking. Ali, mm -hmm. look. Alex, you love them. They are shoes. Aren't they fantastic? That is That's absolutely it. fantastic, do you know? I honestly can't believe. As John said, he's never taken steps before. Look and it's as if he's put them on and it's made him walk. Who does his hands and walk? That's better. Come on, let's go for a walk. He's walking. One thing we want most in life for him to be able to get round on his own two feet. He's got so many hurdles to overcome because of his limitation in size. Within the end of the year, he may be, <laughs> may be making our lives a lot more difficult. Come here, you little bugger. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. This is the moment John and Sue thought they'd never see. Oh, you decided to run, are you? <laughs> do you want to do hop, skip, skip and jump? From the early days, when I found out what condition he had, I always said my son would walk with giants. Sometimes I thought he'd never be able to walk. After what I've just witnessed then, he will be walking with them. Not just walking, even though you're small, you'd be standing shoulder to shoulder with them. Something so small, such a small thing put on someone's foot, you wouldn't think it would enable them to walk. This last week we've had good news after good news. That, for me, is the icing on the cake. Can't wait to get back for the kids to see that. They're just going to be so amazed. Do you know what? There's only one place for them. A special place in the bin. I, I still can't believe it. Alex, you are a superstar, and so is this hospital. I can't thank you enough. Thank Wait you so what? much. Alex, shake okay. hands. Yeah. Say Take thank care. you. You're going to help Have me walk. You've made like a little yeah. miracle for Where's me today. Where's He's walking back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're walking back. You want a cuddle? Say thank you. Oh. Big love. <sighs> Back at the hotel, Alex's brother Mike and sister Jess have no idea that a huge development in Alex's life has occurred today. Hiya. Hello. Got a surprise for you. Big, big surprise. Ali. Ah. Whoa. I can now walk, kids. I couldn't used to walk. They've taught me how to walk. Mike, what do you think? You've got your, you've got your running partner now. Don't get your head. Off your toes. Off your toes. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> He's never been able to do that. Hooray. I'm proud of him. 
Yeah. Okay. How about you, Jess? Same here. Same here. In a couple of months, oh, will he be walking without you holding him? He probably will be, yeah. So, how are you going to cope with that? Be cool. <laughs> She's going to be funny, you know, chasing them about. <laughs> but will the Connaughty's happiness be short-lived? Tomorrow, they will get Alex's all-important brain scan results and discover whether his life may be cut short by a potentially fatal brain aneurysm. Yes. <laughs> Parents Sue and John Connerty have brought their two-year-old son Alex to the DuPont Children's Hospital in America. Less than 24 hours ago, Alex underwent a brain scan to see if he has an aneurysm, a condition associated with his form of primordial dwarfism. Once we left the hospital yesterday, it was like another brick wall in front of us now. We've just got to wait till we get our results. Fingers crossed everything's gone good for us. I'm worried of going in. Are you? I'm not saying that I think there's anything there, but I'm just worried just cos you don't know what's there, you wouldn't know what's there. Just when he was in there yesterday in that machine, I was thinking, God, they can see things, what's going on, and we can't. But we're going to find out now. Little voice in my head says, it's going to be OK, but I just don't know. Not a bloody sleepless night. <laughs> Dr Boba is a leading expert in MOPD type 2, Alex's form of primordial dwarfism. He has analysed the scans to see if Alex has any swelling of the blood vessels in his brain, which would mean he would need surgery to prevent the blood vessels bursting and Alex dying. Hi, young man. Say hello. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the results that we have from Alex's MRI, yes. MRV and MRI. Mm -hmm. This is a picture of the arteries inside uh, and around Alex's brain. This is a shot sort of directly back to front. You can see that's his ear. Yeah. You can see some of the arteries coming up. and. In aneurysm, what we would expect to see, we would see sort of a outpouching, and we're not seeing any evidence of that. Uh, in one sentence, everything looks great. Wow. There is no evidence on the MRA of any type of aneurysm, so Fantastic. really good news. Thank you so much. Believe me. <laughs> But for us as parents, we can go home tonight and sleep and not worry about it. <laughs> well, I think it's very safe to put it out of your minds for a while. Yeah. I want to give you a hug. <laughs> thank you so much. You're welcome. Are you going to say thank you? No, I want a hug from him. Hey! Yeah. You always get hugs off of me, likes to hug you. <laughs> wow. Hi. That is great news. Absolutely. This week has just been... It's been a roller coaster up and down for worrying times that we've had. But as we're going home, we couldn't have expected for any better news for anything down from the the MRI scans for all the scans he's had up down to his feet. From head to toe, he's had as what John calls a full MOT and it's all good news we're going home with, so mm -hmm. we can't ask for much more. The Connaughty's fly back to Liverpool the next day. Sue's parents are there to welcome them home. Who's there? But they're in for a big surprise, as they don't know their grandson has started walking. Oh, 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 oh. Ali, show Nanny your new shoes. I thought they were just going to show us these new little shoes, or supports for his feet. And when Suzanne put him down on the floor, it didn't really sink in as he was walking. Go on, come on, come to Granddad. Come on, come to Granddad. Come on, come wow. to Granddad. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, that's that's like, weird, yeah. oh, oh, my sweet yeah, boy. Come on, Nana. Nana, want you? Oh, oh. it's not lovely. Come on. Oh, oh, come on. Oh, I was looking at him and then I could feel the tears welling up in my eyes. And 
couldn't believe it. To actually see him put one foot in front of another, because he'd never, ever done that before. Hey! Oh, boy! Aren't you a big boy? Oh, you're a different boy, aren't you? You've done a lot while you've been away, haven't you? The trip was just fabulous. Nice. Everything just went completely, I'd say, better than to plan. Just everything went perfect. Every step that we'd done, Seattle, Delaware, it's just all been absolutely perfect. Alex is different in every way. The experience he's had in America has done him the world of good. If he carries on the way he is now, the world's his oyster, I feel. He's always going to be very small, but it's insignificant now to what he has been through. He's forced from day one, so I'm sure he's going to carry on. Apart from his own inner feelings, whether he goes fed up being small sometime in the future, I think, at the majority of the time, he's going to enjoy life. <laughs> Every day is going to be like a big, big adventure for him. If it's down to us, he's going to walk, he's going to talk, he's going to go to school, he's going to grow older, he's going to have lots of friends. He, in our eyes, he's going to do whatever any other child does.